So, if everybody is ready, let's start with our wonderful course. As you know, this course is all about AI and cybersecurity. But as I'm really not sure who's going to watch these videos, I decided to start with introduction to AI. So, if you know what AI is, you can skip this session or you can quickly watch it as a reminder. So, AI for beginners. AI, as you all know, stands for artificial intelligence. And AI is all around us, but unfortunately, mostly misunderstood. In this introduction, I aim to give you a foundation in AI without needing a technical background. I will cover what AI is, how it works, and why it's important for you to understand this technology as it is shaping our world. And more importantly, this introduction hopefully is going to make you understand AI cybersecurity course better. Because we all know AI is used by threat actors as well as by defenders. So let's talk about it. What is AI? AI, it's core. AI is about giving computers the ability to do things that normally require us, human intelligence. This isn't about computers becoming sentient like sci-fi movies. I don't know if you remember um, Robocop or maybe many other movies now, I forgot the names, like uh, Anna Schwarzenegger's beautiful movie, you know, you, know, you know, the Skynet and so on. But it's more importantly performing tasks which gives the computer ability to understand patterns. It makes AI helping decisions in complex situations and even conversing in a way that feels natural. And I'm pretty sure you watched uh, Google Assistant, for example, how it answers call as it's a human. Again, in this introduction, I aim you to let you understand the basic of AI. But later, this course will take you uh, to a different level where we aim to teach you AI and its impact in cybersecurity. We will uncover AI's potential to both revolutionary of our cybersecurity defenses, but also the associated risk that introduced. By end of this course, you will have a clearer grasp of what AI is and how AI used to, def to increase our defenses as well as how hackers or threat actors may use it. So we, again, e we go ahead and uh, we improve our defenses. So how does AI work? Traditional programming tells the computer exactly what to do step by step. When it comes to AI, AI is flipping this. We give AI vast amount of data and algorithm. It's like a recipe. The AI figures out the patterns and learns to make prediction or decisions on any data it's never seen before. So AI learns from data, not from programming. The better the data is, the more AI has the data, it's easier to AI to give smarter decisions. So the fight between Google, Microsoft, and as it was in the news recently, Apple is going to be more and more precious because whoever has more data is going to create a better AI. And of course, I'm not even talking about open AI or other, other uh, decisions, uh, other AI companies, organizations, but this is just a few example. All right, why should you care about AI? AI isn't just about tech buzzword. It has the potential to reshape our world. As I mentioned earlier, this can be for good or for all or for bad, again, for all. AI could help to solve major problems, but also change the way we work. 
I don't know if you remember when cloud was introduced. Everybody was afraid of cloud, thinking it's going to take jobs away. To be honest, yes, cloud takes some jobs away. But it also opened brand new jobs for people who could catch up with cloud and get expertise in cloud. So that's why it's important that we all need to understand AI to make informed choices as these technologies impact our lives. From the news, we see the jobs of the future. Again, why should you care about AI? Because it might help us to potentially solve big problems. I'm really not sure about climate change because um, I put it in, if you listen to big organizations, they predict that AI is gonna help us in climate change, but hey, AI requires huge computing power. Huge computing power requires energy, cooling. Energy cooling requires natural resources. So I'm really not sure how it's gonna help climate changes, but hey, let's, let's mention it. As, as I said, this could be for good or question mark. But I, what I really believe AI is going to do is help in medical against diseases. Automation of the future of jobs. Yes, AI has started to already kick in and help humanity to shape the future as well as it started to take some jobs away. So there is going to be concerns about bias and fairness. Uh, is it going to be fair to fire people? Or what about bi bias? So if you remember, Microsoft chatbot was trained quickly to do wrong decisions. So it's going to be a challenge to keep everything under control. So how do we use AI in our daily lives? You might not realize it, but AI is likely woven into life already. I'm pretty sure you are aware that your streaming, your favorite streaming service recommending a new show to you, or like at, this could be Netflix or Disney, or if you buy things from eBay or Amazon, don't you see the recommendations? Forget about eBay, Amazon. If Even if you go to a store like Walmart or... Carrefour, or you name it, Migros, you know, you will see all this. So, that's what's AI. The way your bank flags unusual transactions. Yes, look, I was a CISO in a global bank uh, managing a huge region. I had a huge fraud detection team, but I know that my team was also relying on AI, how it was flagging transactions, unusual transactions. So AI is becoming increasingly embedded into the tools we use and the service we rely on. There is four types of AI as of today. The narrow AI, or as we call it, the weak AI. Applied AI, AI as service and generative AI. Let's quickly talk about both. So, what is narrow or weak AI? The definition. The AI designed for a specific task or domain and the most prevalent from today. I'm pretty sure you all use narrow AI. Virtual assistants like Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, or this could be uh, Cortana, which is now called uh, Copilot. So, it's used recommended engines, and those engines are already used by, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Netflix, Amazon, Spotify, and you name it. You, I'm pretty sure you already are aware that AI can create great videos, great images, facial recognition. And if you have an iPhone or Android, I'm pretty sure you are aware that hey, the phone is quite accurately unlocking your unlocking the security without even you entering the password. Windows has it already in build called Windows Hello. Uh, you might show a photo and uh, AI te will tell you what it is. Security systems, for example, if you use any security system at home, it will smartly predict what image it sees. 
if you use any spam filters, AI is already behind it, identifying and filtering junk email. If you use great endpoint solution, such as Exitium, AI is already embedded, which it is not just looking at signatures or behavior or our uh, Exitium's patent technology containment, but it also has AI to predict a file to be safe or not. Chatbox, it's everywhere today. Even my blog, erdalaskar.com, has a ch chatbot which you can use. Fraud detection, I mentioned a few seconds ago. It's used, and it's what we call narrow or weak AI. What is applied AI? The definition, the defin as a definition, it is more sophisticated compared to uh, weak AI, and it's sold it's used to solve real-world problems. Examples, Mercedes-Benz, Tesla, self-driving cars. I know, I know, it's still under development, but hey, some states in United, in, some states in United States of America do allow AI-driven cars already. Medical diagnostic tools. It's already helping assist doctors with image analysis like identifying tumors and scans, or aiding and disease prediction. Financial trading systems. We already have algorithms that analyze market data and make trades. I know one of the companies uh, from Maracap, Meli Abdullah Venture Capital, uh, FinTech, has this embedded in their tools already. Manufacturing robots. You know that many factories use robots with vision systems, adapted motion control, and this is a photo at the background where you see Amazon self-driven cars which gets our orders ready without human interaction. Three, AI service, or as it's called, AIAS. Definition, cloud-based AI solution offered by major tech companies such as Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, makes AI accessible without requiring in-house expertise. The Google AI is there for language translation, computer vision tools, predictive modeling, AWS, similar to Google, offering pre-trained AI models and tools for developers. Marks of AI, suite, for, suite of AI offerings, including both building frameworks and machine learning tools. And I'm pretty sure you saw how cool Copilot is. Now, Microsoft is also building co-pilots for security, which is there to help security predictions, uh, to help you make security predictions. Uh, Exitium, yes, we don't offer AI service, but we use some of the services that you see on the screen to make our product better. Oh, generative AI. Again, this is a rapidly evolving field, which, gives the capability to AI to creating text, images, music, code, videos, you name it. I'm pretty sure you are all aware of ChatGTP. It is a conversational AI which is capable of incredibly human-like dialogues. ChatGTP was the first or one of the biggest in the market, but Gemini from Google quickly is catching up. Delhi, Mid Journey, it creates images from text descriptions and it's Today, free with Copilot embedded from Microsoft, for example, or Google has it in Gemini. GitHub Copilot assists programmers by auto generating code snips. So, what I'm trying to say is AI is there to make our life easier. And as, as for today, we have four different ways how we use AI. So, what is AI? AI is rapidly transforming our world and its impact is felt in our life, including cybersecurity. And don't forget, this course is all about AI and cybersecurity. While AI has the potential to significantly improve our ability to defend against cyber attacks, as I mentioned earlier, it's also being used by malicious threat actors to develop more sophisticated and effective attacks. AI and cyber attacks are type of malicious activity that uses artificial intelligence to automate and enhance various aspects 
of hacking, phishing, creating malware, DDoS attacks, and data theft. It's clear that AI-driven cyber attacks can pose serious threat to organization, critical infrastructure, infrastructure, and individuals. As it's not just humans, smart humans behind it, but today it's also the computing power behind it. So, when it comes to AI and cybersecurity, AI has revolutioned the cybersecurity industry. Attackers can use AI to develop, to test new attack vectors, while defenders can use AI to detect and stop attacks. However, AI can also be used to evade detection and attack vulnerable system. So, AI has increased the efficiency and speed of cyber attacks. AI can be trained to evade traditional cybersecurity defenses. AI can also be used to automate attacks and find vulnerabilities. AI can be used in cybersecurity for good, which is not just another tool. It has patterns which can find Excel, which can help finding Excel, identifying a suitable anomalies human misses, might misses. It speed vastly outpaces manual threat analysis. And most importantly, AI can be predictive. Yes, I know there is many false positives today, but this prediction can help us to get ahead of attackers instead of reacting to them, which is what happens in the industry today. So, if there is the good, there is also the bad. So, here is a small case study how AI driven network defenses works. So, um, just imagine a waste of network in, as a living organism. AI becomes its immune system. It learns the baseline, the normal behavior, the devaluation, the triggers, and uh, all this triggers investigation. Unlike traditional tools, AI isn't just looking for known attack signatures, it's also learning what wrong looks like, even if it's never been seen before. If there is anything good, of course there is also the bad, then AI becomes the advisory. Don't forget, AI is just a tool, and any tool can be used for good or bad. Attackers are leveraging AI to design attacks that slips under the rudder of rules-based system. Deepfakes, for example, are a serious issue for social engineering and brand damage. Tomorrow's malware might be quoted by an AI constantly involving. With this, we're coming to the end of this chapter. Next, we're gonna have a chapter called Understanding AI During Cyber Attacks. I'm looking forward together with Valentin to see you in this chapter.